we have our gorgeous model here. We're gonna keep treating her. So we finished treating her cheeks already. We did some voluma laterally um, and then some contour medially on her cheeks and now her cheeks look amazing. We have done a little bit of jawline on her too. We did a little bit of lift um, and then a tiny little bit of define here. Today, what we want to do, so now that we worked on those foundational areas, right? We work on the cheeks, we work on the chin, the jawline. Um, now we have a nice foundation on our house, right? So now we're going to work on the softer areas, right? Now we're going to start painting the walls and hanging mirrors and frames and paintings. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to soften a little bit more than Isolevian folds because really we haven't treated them, right? We did a tiny little bit of the piriform fossa when we were doing the, the cheeks, but she still needs a little bit more support right there. So we're going to do a little bit of nasolabial fold. We're going to do it with a cannula, okay, just to be on the safer side. And then we're going to do a tiny little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see, but she has a tiny bit, still a little bit of volume loss right here on the pre area. So we're going to give a little bit of support right there. Um, we're going to use Restylane Define for these areas, okay? And then today, we're going to be doing a little bit of under eye as well with a cannula. Galderma just rebranded one of their products, um, Restylane L, and they rebranded it as a rest, um, Restylane Eyelight for the under eye. So we're going to be using L, which is now Eyelight, right? So it's the same product. They just rebranded it and changed the name. Uh, and they rebranded it into... Um, single syringes of half ml um, and the protocol for eye light is to do a half ml for both eyes and then bring the patient back a couple of months later reassess and add a little bit more so we're planning on using probably like a 0.4 maybe of the of the wrestling l um, she doesn't have a lot of volume loss under the uh, eyes, which is really, really nice. And now that she has good support on the cheek, it's even better than what it used to be. So the only thing that we're going to be treating is really this medial aspect of the under eye. So it's going to be a, an easy treatment on her. Okay. She's not going to need a lot. So, and I was cleaning her. I just removed her makeup. So I'm going to clean with alcohol. And then we'll start with the Restylane Define over the nasolabial folds and, and pre area. And then we'll finish it up with the cheeks. I'm going to do the hinders lines, okay, with a pencil, just to kind of like keep my, it just helps me to visualize better what we're doing. That little entry point for the nasolabial fold, I'm going to do around here, okay, on the bottom of the, of the cannula. The, the, the cannula on this area, it's a great way to deliver a little bit of product on the piriform fossa as well. If you're kind of like a little bit scared or in my case, for example, I aspirated they, or somebody were injecting me aspirated blood in one of my piriforms. So I know that my artery runs low in that area. So for me, whenever we are trying to do a little bit of piriform, we always have to go with cannula. So it's a great way of another alternative to do it. Um, and if you're kind of like new and a little bit scared of the PD form, which you should, the cannula is a great alternative. Okay. And so, so hinders. And here, instead of doing the line that I normally do, I'm going to mark kind of like that PD form area where we want to give a little bit of volume, just so we don't lose track of that. Yeah, your cheeks look good. And if she had, she doesn't have any hollowness on the lateral aspect of the eyes, if you can see. So she just has this little bit medially. So, but if she had lateral um, hollowness, you could treat that with a cannula as well. So when we're doing it, when we're doing the under eye, I'll go over what I would do to treat that lateral aspect, even if she doesn't need it. As you can see, I'm marking kind of like the jaw, right? So you don't get give any product or any volume right there. And if you scrunch the skin a little bit, it just shows exactly where that, that little jaw starts, right? And you want to stay away from that. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do your contract your mentalist. Mm -hmm. Okay, relax. Very good. So this is really the area that we're going to be treating, the, the pre-jewel. 
And since we're going to be treating today with cannula only, this makes it a, a lot safer, right? A lot of a safer treatment for JC and myself as an injector. And um, also, it, there's less risk for bruising, right? There's going to be less swelling. So it's like a win-win. And you have a little bit more volume loss on this side than this one, but we'll do, do just a tiny little drop right there. You're gonna like that. I like Resil and Define for these areas. And I probably have mentioned it before um, because it, it really integrates really well into the tissue. So, and it has um, what Galderma calls um, expression technology. So it kind of like stretches with the skin when you smile or when you, talk or when you kiss so it, it it kind of like looks a little bit more natural we're going to be using a cannula it's a 25 gauge one and a half inch so with our pilot needle remember that the facial artery comes right here right on the back on the notch but it also branches right here and then we have like another little branch that comes right here where we're going to be working so that's why you want to treat with a cannula, right? There's less risk for bruising, less risk for a vascular occlusion. So, um, but just know that you might bruise, okay? The, the areas around the mouth, it's an area that it's kind of like normally bruises just a little bit. So hopefully you won't. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be anything big. Okay. Little poke. Little poke, JC. Little poke, poke. There you go. And when I introduce my pilot needle, I... Just you don't need to go too deep, okay, with your needle. Remember that we are just trying to create a little pathway for that cannula, right? So the deeper you go, the easier you're gonna get into vessels and then you're gonna bruise them. And then when I release my pilot, I always kind of like pinch the skin just a little bit so I can see a tiny little bleb of blood so I don't lose my little point. When I train, I always tell my trainees that the hardest part about the cannula is finding a little hole. <laughs> After that, it goes easy. Okay. And then I kind of like pull my skin a little bit taut and then glide it. Movement, okay? Little bit of movement. And I feel whenever you're gliding the cannula, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a plastic surgeon doing lipo, right? They use a cannula too to do the lipo. And if you see, they're always doing this kind of motion, like advancing the cannula. And it's just because the, it, it glides better on the tissue. So tiny little short movements, and then it advances really, really nicely. And if you're in the right plane, it should advance without any issues. You can see the depth of the cannula, okay? We're kind of like in a deeper dermis, okay? Um, you can still see the shape. You don't want to see a lot of the shape, right? You want to give just a little bit of support right there. And my, the tip of my cannula is right under that PD form area. Uh, so I'm just going to do a little tiny bolus right there. Probably like a 0.1. Okay. You let me know if you need a break, okay? And moving... I'm gonna do kind of like a little triangle, just covering the little PD form area right there. Beautiful, okay. I did a point two, and I think that looks really good. Let's see, oh yeah, okay, turn, turn, turn. Now I'm gonna do a tiny little line, okay? Remember the nasolabial fold, you don't wanna completely correct. We want to have a little bit of nasolabial fold, we just don't want it super deep. So I'm gonna do maybe like a, 0.1 or 1.5 um, on or 0.15 in that little um, line. And I'm going to do just a line, a straight line. Beautiful. This little line that you have right here, JC, mm -hmm. that tiny little one that you have around the mouth, that one is not going to go away, okay? Because it's already a wrinkle that that motion, right? And that, mm -hmm. and that volume loss created. So maybe in the future, well, the gold standard for those little fine lines in the surface, it's a laser. Oh, okay. Or even microneedling with PRP, something that it's in the surface of the skin, right? It will help with that. Um, Injectable-wise, we could try maybe a little bit of bobella, just very, very superficially, just to give a little bit of support right there to soften it. But again, the gold standard will be a laser.
Okay, but this one definitely looking better. So let's do the other side. And I did a point three total. Okay, so I did a point two on the PD form, and then like a, a little line of point one. Of this side. Movement, okay. Okay, movement, okay. And when, when I go in, sometimes you can struggle a little bit and that's kind of normal. Once you're in, you're in and it glides very nicely, but sometimes it will give you a little bit of a hard time in the beginning. Let me know if you need a break, JC. So um, hold it with a, like a pencil. I think that makes it so much better. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Okay, let me poke you again. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. Another little poke, exactly where I did the first one. This one was just not cooperating with us today. Look. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. I try not to go too deep so I didn't bruise her, and I guess I stayed a little bit too superficial. I like to keep my fingers on top of the skin because I can feel the cannula kind of like moving under the skin and you can kind of like assess the depth too. Right there. I can feel the cannula as well. So I'm right there under the PD form. So we're gonna do a little bolus right there. Doing that. And I was doing a training earlier and the girl that I was training, she was like, can we aspirate with cannula? And we can, we just need to kind of like understand what's going on, right? So you, you're gonna need to aspirate for a little bit longer because if you were in a vessel, that, that blood is gonna have to travel like a longer distance, but you can definitely can. I aspirated blood once with a cannula, that was scary. So if you are in a, scary area and you're not comfortable, you can definitely aspirate with a cannula. Just be patient, right? And aspirate. If I normally, when I aspirate with my syringes with needle, I aspirate, aspirate a, um, a bubble of 1.1 of air. With a cannula, I will say maybe like a 0.2 or a 0.3 of air and just hold it there for a couple of seconds to give enough time for the blood to travel in case you are in a vessel. But just know that the 25 gauge cannula, it's pretty safe. Not completely safe, but it's pretty safe. And if you had a little bit of asymmetry, right, where we have like one side a little bit deeper than the other, well, this is the time where you want to play with that. Okay, very good. Perfect, beautiful. So we did 0.3 and 0.3 on each side. I didn't treat it this little line at the end because that's more like a little line that we already, that the skin already kind of like has a little tiny wrinkle right there. I will do tiny droplets of define or refine, I'm sorry, the thinnest of the family of the Restylane with the expression technology. And um, that tends to work really well to soften those little lines, okay? So we have a little bit more than 0.4. Let's try and do those 0.2 and 0.2. And we might be able to get along just with one syringe in, in those pre jaw areas. Remember that when we did her chin and jawline, we did already a little bit of product on the pre jaw area, so she's not gonna need a lot. I think you need a tiny little bit more on this side. So I'm gonna start on this side. So I'm gonna do a tiny, uh, the entry point around here, and then I'm just gonna go and fan the product right here, just like we did the first time. She has a good volume right here, so now I feel like she's missing just a tiny little volume right there. So those are the lines that I'm gonna do. And I just pinch just a tiny little bit to see the little bleph of blood, so that way we don't lose the little entry point. There you go, okay. Movement. A little bit of talking. Let me know if you need a break, okay? This area can be a little sensitive. Perfect, right there. Okay, so cannula right there. Okay, you can see kind of like the shape and the depth, right? We're not super superficial. 
but you don't want to be super deep either. Brazilian define is kind of like soft. So if we go too deep, then we lose the volume. And I'm going to do tiny little lines right there. Probably planning for like a point two or a point three right there in that little area. She doesn't need a lot. Okay, turn a little bit more, Jason. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Movement, okay? Movement, movement. Perfect. Okay. Second little line right there. Tiny drop. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So now last one over here. So now we're going for the higher one. And remember, I have the jaw right here. You might not be able to see it in the camera, but I still can see it right here. So I'm not adding anything into the jaw. We're just adding a little bit on the pre-jaw area, kind of like to blend that jaw so we don't see it as much. Okay, very good. Doing great. Doing great, JC. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Just one more drop, okay? I promise. You're nice and numb now, so you're not going to feel much. Very good. So the first couple of, like, cannula passes are a little bit more tender, obviously, but now she's numb, so she's not going to feel much. So I'm going to do just a tiny little drop right here. I felt like she needed just a tiny drop. I still remember um, years and years ago when I was training for this small um, injectable office, um, I had a, uh, an internal doctor, internal medicine doctor taking the class. And we did the theory first, and then in the afternoon we did the hands-on. And uh, I remember that we were doing the theory, and he was, well, very analytical, right? And, and he was like, but how much do you want me to do on each injection? How much? A point one, a point five. And I was like, it's hard for me to tell you. You have to see it under the skin. So it's really like an art. And he got upset. So he was a little bit upset. And then during the hands-on in the afternoon, he, he came and he was like, I want to apologize. You really, it's really true. I mean, you cannot tell how much to put on each little drop. So after you are comfortable with the pushing the product, right? The extrusion force of the syringe and the products that you're using, you're really not even going to look at your syringe anymore. You're just going to be looking at the skin and how it's plumping and how much volume you're giving. So this is really, really like an art. I, I tell my patients and sometimes they're like, but how many pokes are you going to do? My patients, right? And I'm like, it's like asking a painter how many strokes are they going to use for a painting. It's hard to tell. So there's really not a, a cookie cutter pattern for any patient. And I have a point two. So we use a little bit over a point two on that side. So let's do the other side. And I feel this one needs even a little bit less. So the little entry point, I, I'm doing it almost where she has still a little bit of that volume right on the, on the jaw area right here but I'm not delivering any product right there. I'm just gonna go through that and then deliver a little bit of product in the pre jaw area. Book, 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 book. That's it. I know, I know, sorry. Perfect. Move back, okay? Mm -hmm. This one was nice, okay. And then this way. So I'm just going to deliver a little bit of product. I feel this side needs a little bit less. So I'm going to go for this one, the marionette one. Beautiful. Okay. Perfect. It looks really good. I like it. So I'm going to do tiny droplets of refine. These we're going to do with a needle because we want to be very superficial. So I'm going to do tiny little droplets right there just to soften that little line, okay, that little left line with a needle. And refine is even thinner than define, right? So define, um, great areas to treat define with, nasolabial folds, even chins. Chins come really, really nice with define too because it will give you that little bit of projection. Um, but it's kind of like a medium consistency type of filler. Refine is really, really thin, so you can, it gives you the luxury to apply it a little bit more superficially. So we're going to do a tiny, just a couple of drops, probably like a 0.1 and a 0.1 on each side, 
just to kind of like soften those little fine lines. So because we're going to place the product very superficially, JC, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be able to see the tiny little droplets, mm -hmm. okay, under the skin for mm -hmm. the first day or two. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it, okay? They're going to settle and they're going to integrate into the tissue. They're just very superficial. So mm -hmm. that's why you're going to be able to see them for a couple of days, okay? Mm -hmm. And Refine comes with a 30 gauge needle. And I'm practically just going to go under the skin with the bevel of the needle, okay? So it's going to be very tiny little injections. This is the same technique that I use for the aerial lines. I love Bobella for this technique um, on the perioral lines, and it's actually approved by the FDA for that. Um, it works really, really nice. I'm gonna change the needle. Whenever I do this micro droplet technique, I, not, I like for my needles to be really, really sharp. So I do use a lot of needles when I do this one. Um, since you're going just with the bevel and very superficially, you really want to have kind of like control of the depth of the needle. So having a sharp needle helps a lot. One of the first classes that I ever took when I was starting on doing injectables, I took with um, Dr. Chopra. He's a, like a facial plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. And he was so good at kind of like drilling in my head that a little bit goes a long way. And he was the one that came with this idea, and I think he's very true, that Sometimes even if we don't put much product or even if we don't put any product, just the poke of the needle, kind of like the same concept as micro needling, if you think about it, um, it's going to create a little bit of collagen and it helps. So you don't have to use a lot of product. Awesome. That looks awesome. Perfect. So like I said, JC, you're going to be able to see the little tiny little droplets, right, that we left there. I used a almost a 0 0.2 for the whole thing. So a 0.1 on each side from here. So now let's do the under eye. So we're going to do it with the cannula, okay? okay? So I'm going to do a little entry point around here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to glide the cannula in, so you're just going to feel movement. Okay. And then we're going to leave a tiny little bit of product right there. So let me uh, do another little pass of um, chlorhexidine right there on your cheek. She's already clean with alcohol. Let's do a little dab of chlorhexidine. And since we are using the new rebranded product I light. It, it is kind of like cohesive enough that if you had a little bit of volume loss in the medial cheek, you could correct that, that tiny little bit of volume loss in the medial cheek as well with the same product, which is really nice. Because we already did contour on JC, she doesn't have a lot of volume loss on the medial. She, her cheeks are perfect. So I'm just gonna go in and deposit a little bit of product under the eye. So, Restylane L, okay, or the new rebranded um, Restylane Highlight. Like I said, it's the same product. They just rebranded it, and um, they did half ml syringes for the Highlight. Uh, and the recommendation is to do half of a syringe in between the two eyes, and then bring the patient back and do the other half later on. Um, I, I probably we're gonna end up doing that. Okay, we're definitely not gonna use the whole syringe. So tiny little drops. I'm planning maybe a 0.1 or a 0.2 on on each side. And then you know, Restylane L and Restylane Lift, right? They come with this kind of like older type of syringe. So they have the little sticker um, a 
attached into the syringe, so always remove it, obviously. See, if not, you're not gonna be able to look at the numbers. So in the, it is a one and a half inch uh, uh, cannula, so 25 gauge, one and a half. So I'm gonna do the entry point around here. So remember around the eye, we have the suborbicular retaining ligament and we have the transverse cutaneous uh, retaining ligament. So when you go in with the, with the cannula right there, sometimes you, you kind of like get a little bit of resistance from that uh, ligament right there. Just kind of like glide it slowly, slowly until you get through it. And, and you wanna be a little bit deeper on that injection, remember, um, Eyelight or Resilin L. Um, it is a little bit of a thicker product, so you don't want to place it too superficially on that area, and you that's why you end up using just drops of the product and having beautiful results with it. So it's a great product to do. There you go. Okay, we're in. Beautiful right there, and you just feel it gliding. So I'm tilting my cannula right there. You don't even see where I am, okay? That's how deep you wanna be. And we're gonna drop a tiny little drop right there. Tiny little drop. Beautiful. And remember, some patients, and JC is not the She's not alone. Um, she has a little bit of pigmentation in that area too. So some patients have like a little bit that darker pigment in that area. So don't confuse that into hollowness and then end up overdoing it, right? Um, they're still gonna have a little bit of that darker pigment that sometimes makes the area look a little bit deeper than what it really is. So you're still gonna see a little bit of that pigmentation, right? That product is not for the pigment, it's for the hollowness, okay? So it's gonna be kind of like flatter, but you're still gonna be able to see that little darkening, okay? We can do a tiny drop more. I didn't even push a point one. So when you do on your eye, you're, well, I don't look at my syringe anymore again, but I look at the skin, but you're barely gonna be touching the plunger, like barely touching the plunger. Very good. And then these products are so nice, right? They're soft, so you can definitely mold them after you do a little bit of the product. So just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And remember, these products, even if they are not super hydrophilic, they will plump a little bit under the skin. So don't correct your on-dry to 100% on the first time. Um, that's why the protocols for both products, Eyelight and Bobella for the on-dry, both products that are approved by the FDA, they call to do a tiny little bit and then bring the patient back a couple of months later, reassess and add a little bit more if you need to. So just don't overcorrect. That looks really good. Not even a point one. So tiny, tiny drops. Okay, JC. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. And that's why we take that picture always whenever we do the, oh, the before okay. and afters because that's the best way that you can compare oh, it. Okay. And it's going to get better during the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Remember that the eye area is an area that we normally hold a lot of water in it. So that's one of the main reasons why we don't want to overdo it as well because the product is still going to give up a little bit and it's going to plump a little bit. So we want to give a little bit of room for that product to mm -hmm. kind of like settle in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the syringe comes with a little bit of like a little bit extra, okay, when you when you attach it for the for the uh, cannula or the needle for the first time. So I did that tiny little bit extra, and I'm very, very close to that point 0.1. So we're probably going to do the same amount, maybe a point 0.1 on the other side. You don't bleed, you don't squint, you're like the perfect model. Give it a moment. Perfect. Very good. Very good. 
So I'm tilting my cannula right there. You can barely, barely see the, the cannula when it moves right there. So it's nice and deep, which is where you want to be, right? And then we're going to leave just a tiny little bit of product there. Tiny amounts. And again, I'm not looking at the syringe. I'm looking at the skin because uh, the amounts are so, so tiny that if you turn and look at your syringe and you keep pushing, you may go over. So just look at your skin. You're barely going to be touching that plunger. Beautiful. And again, you're correcting to maybe an 80%, 90 as a maximum, okay? Just leave a little bit of room for that product to settle in. We can always bring them back and do a tiny little bit more. And something that is really important, when I do my under eye, I like to do the entry point a little bit more lateral, right? To stay away from the infraorbital foramen, but also the lymphatic system it's kind of like around here. So just be careful going nice and deep um, so you don't get any. And, and that's why I don't like, I, I've seen some injectors kind of like going and moving, moving, moving everywhere. I think that's a little bit more riskier for, for those lymphatic system to kind of like get damaged and then get swelling. And, and we have done a point one. Okay. Get a movement. That looks awesome. Point, we ended up doing a point two. She still has a little bit of room, okay? But we're not gonna touch it right now. We're gonna let the product settle. I ended up doing probably like a point 15 because that syringe comes with a little bit of a pre-fill, okay? On this eye and a point two on this one. Oh yeah. You like it? Mm -hmm. So now when you put your concealer on, mm -hmm. right? Because remember, this is not for pigment, it's right. for the volume loss. Right. So when you put your concealer on, everything is going to look nice and smooth. Smooth, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, because these products, how they work, it's pulling water towards them. You may even see a little bit of hydration in that little skin. Mm -hmm. That's cool. always nice. So instructions after, just like when we do any other filler, no makeup for the first six to 12 hours, mm -hmm. okay? So if you can skip the makeup Thank even you. tomorrow morning, that, that will be awesome. No heavy exercise for the first 24 hours. We don't want to create any bruising that we are trying to avoid. Um, the little cannula entry points are open for a little bit longer than the needle dots, okay? So be careful with those. I'm going to do a little massage and then I'm going to put a little bit of acid tracing over it. Um, a little bit of bruising. You may have a little bit of swelling in the next couple of days, which is very normal tenderness because of the cannulas moving wow. and all of that. Um, but never pain, okay? If it's at any point it's pain, you have to let us know. Yeah, no, um, any excessive bruising or excessive swelling, that's not normal either. Okay. okay? So you let us know right away. All right. Okay. You did great. And for the under eye, if I have a patient that, well, if I have a patient that has less volume loss, you can definitely use Bobella, okay? Bobella is a little bit thinner than, than Restylane Eyelight. I'm not a super fan of blending products, but you can blend, okay? You have to be very, very careful when you blend, especially if you're going to put the product under the eye, because we don't want to cross-contaminate that product whenever you're blending it, right? And then cause an issue under the eye because that area is so tender and delicate. Either use Bobella, right? If you have a patient with barely any kind of like volume loss, um, or you can blend it with a little bit of bacteriostatic saline, okay? It depends on on the depth of the, of the, or the volume loss, right? The hollowness that the patient has. Um, sometimes I will put maybe like a 0.3 or a 0.4 cc's of the bacteriostatic saline and then just mix it with the, with the full 1 ml of the Restylane L or uh, Eyelight in this case um, and just have it kind of like a little bit more softer. 
and then just apply it just like we did with the cannula. Same thing, same, same technique, just the part it will be a little bit softer. They already did all the research before they launched the eyelid and doing it straight from the syringe. And as long as you are at the right depth, right? Don't be too superficial. Um, it should work beautiful. With Bubella, because it's a little bit softer and it's not hydrophilic, sometimes I will do the deeper injection that it's called for, right, on, on protocol. And then sometimes I will go superficial and do just a tiny drop superficial and it works beautiful. I love Bubella for that area, yeah. I mean, I like those, does the job too, but I love Bubella. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one question was, uh, how mm -hmm. did you determine the cannula entry point for the under the eye? Is it based mm -hmm. on the Ender's lines or based on where you think the tip should be? So, it's really based basically on the length of the cannula, right? Um, and I do it a little bit more lateral, right? Just to avoid being too close or going kind of like towards the, the infraorbital foramen. So, but it's based really on the length of the cannula. If you see that, it's kind of like an inch and a half right there. So um, that's really that determination. And, and you could do it like here or here, right? I don't do it high here because of the lymphatic system and I don't do it too low because then you're practically going towards the, the infraorbital foramen. So that's why I choose to do it right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. But it's based on the length of the cannula really. And then, um, is there, how do you know when to use, uh, for the piriform, the needle versus the cannula? Uh-huh. You can use any of the two. So in JC, we have done already a little bit of the piriform fossa with a needle before in whenever we were doing her cheeks. So I know she has a little bit of that support right there. And because today we were doing the nasolabial fold, it was just easier, right? To do it with a cannula. Uh, you can do either or. So um, a safer way, obviously, is going to be with the cannula, right? Because it's blunt. So um, if I have somebody with a lot of volume loss, sometimes I prefer to do the needle because you have that bony prominence that you're lay layering the product on. So you're going to get better, better, more volume with less product, if that makes sense. So with the PD form, when we did it for the first time, I normally do like a 0.1 or a 0.15 and it gets like a nice correction. And when you do the PD form with a cannula, you end up using maybe like a 0.2 or a 0.3. So you're going to be using a little bit more. Um, because if you think about it, the product is layer, laying, right? So it's going to give you a little bit less uh, correction. So depending on, the, on how deep the PD form is, um, sometimes I will choose the needle or the cannula, but they're both safe. Mm -hmm. Well, the cannula is safer, obviously. <laughs> they're both okay to do. What, how do you know when you should aspirate a cannula uh, versus not aspirate a cannula? So it's, again, the cannulas are so, it's, it's very rare that you will go into a vessel with a cannula. So I normally don't aspirate when I'm using cannula. It's really rare that, I mean, if you, if you check studies on how often uh, a cannula goes into a vessel, especially at 25 gauge, it's very, very low. Um, and again, you're at the right depth, right? You're moving along, so you're safer. You can always aspirate with a cannula, that's not a problem. I mean, aspiration is always, I, I feel like it's always the safest bet. I don't aspirate when I use cannulas.